now, and I assume we're live on uh, television. Are we up? Okay, I got thumbs up from both of my texts, which means we're live on The Wiley Drake Show. If you're listening to Crusade Radio and you're not watching us, shame on you. <laughs> Listen to Crusade Radio, but watch us as well. Go to The Wiley Drake Show. You got to put in T-H-E, The Wiley Drake Show. Dot com. The Wiley Drake Show dot com. I like that. The Wiley Drake Show. Not some other show, but the Wiley Drake Show dot com. Go to that website, click on and listen in. And now we're gonna take our first caller here live on the Wiley Drake Show. Good morning, God bless you, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. Good morning. How are you, my dear friend? All right, tell me your name, if you don't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, before I ask this lady her name, I want you to know that uh, my name is Wiley Drake. This is the Wiley Drake Show. We're very upfront about that, but we do know that there are times when people choose not to give their name. Some of our people that live in Gaza City in the Middle East, some of our people who call us from North Korea, some of our people that call us from China, where they're being persecuted, uh, prosecuted and even executed, and also we know that we have government officials that when people complain about their illegality, when people complain and reveal evidence that shows that judges are rotten and trashy and filthy, they come against people. So we know there may be some folk that will not give their names. When we ask you for your names, you're welcome to just pass that question up and move on, but we do want to hear your story. Now, with that in mind, for my first caller, I'm saying you're welcome to identify yourself or stay anonymous, but what's on your mind, my dear sister? My name is Kimberly Wyckoff, and I am fighting CPS corruption and judges and lawyers who lie and steal children. Well, we have an epidemic in this country. We have an epidemic in this country that even the liberal court, even the most ungodly court in the land, the most overturned high court, the Ninth Circuit, said in their court documents to the Supreme Court that the CPS were ill-trained and illegal and needed to be reformed. Now, that's the most controversial, most overthrown court in the land. And if they believe that, how much more to those of us who have lost loved ones literally to death and literally to separation, how much more do we uh, indeed know about that? So tell us, my dear Kimberly, what happened to you? Um, well, I was raped at 15 by the man who I ended up marrying at 17 out of fear for my life. Um, I suffered severe domestic violence um, and rape throughout the 12-plus years of our marriage. Um, I bore five wonderful children out of that, which are the grace of God. Um, the only thing that helped me through, we spent many nights hiding in the bedroom. Um, just completely tragic. Um, in May... 23rd of 2010, we had been evicted again for the umpteenth time because he would spend money on pornographic stuff, um, gambling, whatnot. We were living with my parents, whom I hid the, the abuse from for years. I suffered um, knee injury, back injury. Um, he stomped on my head, had multiple concussions, and out of fear for my life and my children's life, I would lie about it when the cops would come. Um, Finally, on May 23rd, he, my older son actually hit me at the age of 12, and when my older son hit me is when I realized that I was breeding the exact same person in which I despised. Um, so I decided to take a stand. Um, the abuse at that point, it came out in front of my family. Um, my father had came home from work, and the man attacked my dad with a knife and a fork. Mm. At that point... Um, he finally, after a push and struggle, he never did hit me in front of my father because he knew better. Um, he left the home. I then had my five children with me for four plus months in which the man wanted nothing to do with the children except for to abuse me through them. Um, he told me through all the years, you know, you'll never have anybody. Nobody will ever want you. Um, and then my older son was with us. I did get a boyfriend. 
Um, at that point, my ex found out about it. Um, my older son caused a fight with that man, um, pushing him back. He did reframe him to the wall for his safety and the safety of everybody else in the house, not knowing what to do because my child was 12. He asked my father, you know, what do I do with him? And so they yelled him to the wall. Then my father took my son outside, got my son calmed down. Um, of course, my son went to his father, turned that in, CPS. I was in Reading on September 7th. Um, taking an older lady down to Reading because I would do stuff like that for the older people in my community. Um, I actually did CPR on a lady in um, Walmart. And when I got home that day, um, CPS had came and removed my children and gave them back to the abuser. Mm. Um, I have fought in court. I fought to have them removed from him if they weren't going to give them to me to at least put them in foster care to get them out of the, the care of him because it's unsafe. My children are severely traumatized. Um, CPS continues to allow them to have unsupervised visits with their father. After those visits, they defecate in their pants, they urinate, they throw um, ridiculous fits. Um, they have now not allowed me to have any contact with my children except for one hour per month because I refuse not to audio tape any and all conversations with CPS due to their lies. Mm -hmm. um, on May 18th, I went to court and they, CPS, ordered a restraining order against me. I'm now no longer allowed to contact my worker, the county, um, the DA concerning the rape. I had um, an investigator come and actually take a report on the rape and the domestic violence on March 9th. At that meeting, off the record, um, he told me that I needed to realize that I've done the best that I could do by my children and let this go. This is very dangerous and that I could end up with a bullet in my head. Ladies and gentlemen, the absolute disaster that you just heard about is repeated almost every day and sometimes several times a day in relationship to this television and radio show. We have another fellow that's traveling around the country right now. He is totally separate from us, but working with us, and we're working with him. His name is William Windsor. William Windsor has a website called lawlessamerica.com. William Windsor went through this kind of nonsense and is fighting now to produce a movie, a documentary, that will videotape these stories from these men and these women who have been vilely abused by our government, by those that the Ninth Circuit say are ill-qualified and uh, illegal and so forth. And so we indeed do thank you for calling, uh, Kimberly. Thank you for telling us your story. And by the way, whether it's Kimberly or anyone else, I want to give you, uh, we're going to be coming up on our website in the very near future with a, spe with a place where you can go and put your story on. But right now, the way we're doing it is we're taking emails, and I would encourage you to sit down, uh, get a cup of coffee, and uh, relax, and then tell your story in as much detail as you possibly can. But again, remember, we need to make it concise. Now, here's what we want you to do, Kimberly and others that have these kind of stories. We want you to send an email uh, to my producer and my uh, personal assistant. Her name is Corey, C-O-R-I. Last name is Harkins, H-A-R-K-I-N-S, Corey Harkins. And her email is Corey Harkins at gmail.com, Harkins at gmail.com. Send her an email and say, this is my story. Starting this Saturday, and I don't even know what that date is, let me look real quickly, but starting this Saturday, which is going to be uh, the fourth day of August, starting this Saturday, I'm going to be starting what I call a high noon shootout with government officials. At 12 noon on Saturday, we're going to name names and we're going to pray imprecatory prayer. Now, I don't have the time right now to go into imprecatory prayer and what it is, but it is a biblical approach, very biblical. And uh, uh, Martin Luther uh, recommended it to the church. 
and um, so did other early church leaders, but we've lost it. And we found out, as in this story with Kimberly, many times these people, these abusers, these spouses that are abusing children and abusing their spouses, they go to court and the courts do nothing about it. And we need to take action. Starting this Saturday, we will begin to take action against judges, social workers, public pretenders. They assign what they call a public defender to a couple or to an individual in these courts, and they're nothing more than public pretenders. I have confronted them, so have others, and so many times they're just there. They don't do anything to protect you, and they go along with the judges. They have these psychological uh, analysts. They have these uh, social workers. We have judges. We have lawyers that are as corrupt as corrupt can be. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing all of these terrible stories, and I'm going to name names. And if you'll give me the names of the judges, if you'll give me the names of the lawyers, if you'll give me those names, we will broadcast those names every Saturday, and we will pray imprecatory prayer against them. And that imprecatory prayer says in one place, and let another take his office. And that's what we'll be praying. So if you would like to be a part of that, uh, there's a telephone number and and an access code. You can call in on that prayer line. We will be having a high noon shootout every Saturday. The phone number to call on is 712-432-1690. At 712-432-1690. The access code is 399-430-POUND. That's 399-430-POUND. Now, folks, this is not for the squeamish. If you're a pantywaist Christian and think you got to love everybody, uh, I believe in love. Jesus believed in love. But Jesus also walked in the temple with a whip, took names, and kicked butt. Jesus also told his disciples, you ought to arm yourself because times are getting tough. Now, that's my Jesus. And so if you'd like to call in, Kimberly, and uh, pray with us and pray for us, we would welcome you, 712-432-1690. The access code is 399-430-POUND. I invite Kimberly and I invite each of you. We will spend time in a high noon shootout with corrupt government officials and pray imprecatory prayer against them. Please get those names to us. Please call in, and let's go after these guys. Amen to that. Okay, Kimberly, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. I I am so uh, sorry for the way my country I went to Vietnam twice and fought for this country. I wasn't wounded, but I had to kill people to keep them from killing me. And I didn't like Vietnam, and I didn't like going, but I went for the freedom in this country. But I did not go to fight for this country. So these judges and lawyers and workers in CPS and other family services can take our children away from us and continue to attack us. We will fight back. Amen to that. Well, amen, Kimberly. Thank you so much. God bless you, and have a great, great day. God bless you, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a lady named Kimberly with another of the horror stories. And I'm here to tell you, folks, imprecatory prayer is now our duty. Now that all legal efforts have been exhausted, and we've tried everything. I've been in court more than most attorneys. Now that all legal efforts have been exhausted, we must begin imprecatory prayer at the key points of the parliamentary role in the earth where we live. Now, you say, well, Wiley, you're nuts. You're crazy. Yes, I am. But that's all right. I'll get over it, maybe. I'm going to heaven one of these days, and that's when I'll get over all of this. But in the meantime, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of being beat up 
and watching my friends and my neighbors being beat up by government officials who are illegal and at the leader and the top of this whole nonsense is one sodomite, one sodomite named Barney Frank who married his sodomite sexual partner and he is a leader in the United States House of Representatives. And I'm praying that the AIDS that he has will become more advanced so that God can take him out of here if he does not come to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And everybody wants to say, well, what about God wants to save him? Yes, God wants to see even sodomite Barney Frank saved and sodomites in the court saved and so forth. But God will take them out at our request according to the word of God, if they do not turn to him. John Calvin, for some of you Calvinites, you debate theology all the time. You need to wake up and listen. John Calvin gave the church, and I'm a Baptist, I'm not a Calvinist, but John Calvin gave the church its marching orders from the Bible. The righteous, he said, have dominion, but only through imprecatory prayer against the ungodly. David, as our Old Testament shepherd, gave us many imprecatory prayers, and those prayers can be best found in focus in Psalm 109, also Psalms 55, Psalm 58, Psalm 68, Psalm 69, and Psalm 83. Pray these back to God, and I promise you, based on the authority of God's word, he will answer. Now, I know what some of you theologians are going to do. You're going to jump up and say, well, wait a minute, Wiley. That's Old Testament. We're in New Testament. Well, I got news for you, gentlemen and ladies. I am a Judeo-Christian. I was born in America. I have a birth certificate to prove it, contrary to the illegal alien in the White House. And when I ran against him uh, for vice president with Dr. Alan Keyes, we both turned our birth certificates in. Obama did not, would not, until he was finally forced to turn in an eight-layer, an eight-layer fraudulent document, etc. Now, I'm not getting on that any further today, but we need to pray these prayers back to Almighty God. We do it on a daily basis here. And we're going to have a high noon shootout every Saturday. High noon shootout with government corrupt officials. We're going to name names. I've got a list already. I've got a list of about 45 czars that our dictator, illegal alien, appointed as czars over all kind of things, and their names are going to the top of the list. And we're going to pray Psalm 109, that their wives would become widows, their children would become orphans, and another would take your office. We're going to pray these back to God. Now, for those of you theologians who think I'm in too Old Testament, well, let's just take a little trip. I believe the whole Bible, by the way. Let's take a trip over to Jesus. We have a caller on the line with us. Go ahead. Hi there. Good morning, and God bless you. The rule on this program is you do not have to identify yourself, but if you would like to, you're welcome to. Sir, what's on your mind? And um, I uh, was one of the authors of a flyer that uh, I think you read um, about the killing in Colorado, a flyer that was uh, drafted by a group of people called Community and Liberation. All right. Well, now I would assume you're referring to uh, the idiot that went in there and killed all those people? Exactly. Well, tell our listening audience, because this is a worldwide audience, we have people listening in Gaza City, in the Middle East, in North Korea, and South China, and all over the world. So tell them to what you're referring, and then tell us about that brochure. Um, well, we're referring to the fact that um, a young man, a 24-year-old man, um, who uh, was from San Diego, California, and who was an exceptionally bright student in high school, and then um, went on to an undergraduate uh, university in Riverside, the University of California, was one of the top students in the University of California at Riverside. He then got a job um, 
studying neuroscience at the Hello. University of Colorado. Yeah, hang on a minute. And was studying neuroscience at the University of Colorado. And at a certain point, just a few days ago now, a couple of weeks ago, walked into a movie theater, said that he Man, was got uh, the Joker, right uh, a comic back? book character, and a movie well, I, character. I was calling because Bob and, called me and asked and me to call to talk about my book. I was just confirming. Twelve people and injured 58 12, others. Well, 45 your time. Uh, that'll be fine. So I belong okay, to a... No, 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 not 1245. Uh, uh, Our time. Lay people. Be 9, uh, 940. And was... So what interested our okay. story among other okay, things it'll be 1045. He was so highly, quote unquote, okay. educated. He was so highly educated. And so our flyer kind of put the question out there, what does it what does it mean to be educated? We say that people are highly educated, but is it true that a person is highly educated if he does something like this, you know? Well, if I remember correctly, and I'm not a historian, but if I remember correctly, Adolf Hitler was pretty well educated, if I remember right. Yes. Exactly. And so was Mussolini, and uh, uh, so was uh, 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 Hussein, et cetera, et cetera. So many of these guys have been very well educated, but they're absolutely uh, evil, vile people. Yeah, and in fact, that, that, was, the, that was the thing that, that we wanted to kind of put out there was, what does this really mean to be educated? And one of the things that we were saying is, is that... Um, we think that you're not really educated if you don't know the reason why you're living. Yeah. And and that this is this is what's missing in our education system, and 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 even what's missing in our families in many cases is is concern that a person know why he or she is alive. Amen. You no. Know? Um. And and that's really that's not just a problem of of educational institutions or an educational system. It's a problem of us as the American people. What do we, what do we give our, what do we tell our students, what do we, what do we give our children when it comes to that, you know? And one of the things we mentioned in our flyers, it seems to us right now that the only thing that, that you said, the only reason to be educated is to, is to have, is to, is to have a lot of success in the world, but, um, but that's a, that failed, that failed as as a reason. In the end, it fails as a reason to live for many people. So, Well, my dear friend, uh, I think we're on the same page, uh, and I think many of my listeners are. If they would like to get in touch with you or get a look at that uh, uh, flyer, how do they do that? Um, they, can, they can access that flyer at our website, which is uh, www. Uh, clonline.us. That's www.clonline.us. Okay, now wait a minute. I'm a little bit confused. I understand it's www, but it's C as in Charlie, L as in Lucy. Exactly. C as in Charlie, L as in Lucy, and then online. All one word. It reads like clonline.us. Okay, so C-L-O-N-L-I-N-E.us. Exactly, exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to get that brochure and you'd like to uh, look at it and you'd like to consider it, and by the way, if you'd like to talk about it on the Wiley Drake Show, you can call us on our 800 number. Or you can call us on Crusade Radio number. This gentleman is on the Crusade Radio number right now. Our 800 number is available. If you've read the flyer or you read the flyer and you'd like to come back on and say, hey, I want to tell you my experience with it. I want to tell you what I think. You're welcome to do so. The number he's calling on right now that would be busy is 559-592-5961. But the other number, the 800 number, is not busy. That 800 number is 1-800-839-3002. And my personal cell phone number, someone just called me on it, and I was unable to talk to them because I was already running my mouth, and I only have uh, 
uh, one mouth and two ears, but so that means I'm supposed to listen twice as much as I talk, but I didn't get to talk to them. And so, caller, you're welcome to call back on my cell phone number. My cell phone number is 714-865-8132. Now, sir, give me your name again, please. My name is Christopher Bassich. Spell the last one. Be like boy, A-C-I-C-H. B-A-C-I-C-H? Yep. All right, Christopher, and you go Thank back. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. God bless you. Call back anytime. We're here uh, five days a week, uh, two hours a day, one at 9 a.m. and one at 5 p.m. Where are you located? Uh, right now I'm located in uh, Merced, California. Oh, okay. Well, we're, okay, so the 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock is... New York City. Yeah, okay. Well, we, I do a show out of New York at 11 a.m. New York time on Wednesday. I'll be on uh, WASB, WRSB as well as on television, uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. in New York. All right, well, maybe I'll try to come back on then. We'll see. That'll be fine. Call on the 800 number. That's the best one to get in on. All righty. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. This is Wiley. <laughs> oh, thanks, Wiley. Have a good day. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't want people to confuse me with Bob. Bob's an old man. I'm only 68 years old. <laughs> Amen. Now, Bob's my buddy. Bob, uh... Bob is Bob. <laughs> anyway, Bob uh, arranged that. And uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, producer, who finally got to the office today. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, would you look up that website and get that uh, brochure printed up for us? Can you tell me again? Yes, it's www.cl. C is in Charlie, L is in Lucy, online, clonline.us. And there should be a brochure there uh, by a Christopher Bache, B-A-C-I-C-H, I think. But anyway, get that and print it for me if you can, and we'll take a look at it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. If you think I'm wound up now, wait till I get my second cup of coffee. I'll really be wound up. <laughs> no, really. <clears throat> Folks, I am uh, serious as a heart attack. I never had one. Thought I did one time when they threw me in jail at the White House, put me in a paddy wagon, bounced me all over town because I was praying at the White House. They bounced me all over town, and I got what my doctor later diagnosed after spending $27,000 uh, at the hospital. They decided I was perfectly healthy, had nothing wrong with me except I had a bruised chest wall because they bounced me around in the back of a paddy wagon in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., because I refused to cease praying. And I, I was having chest pains. I thought I was having a heart attack. I'm an old man. I'm 68 years old. I thought I was having a heart attack and got scared and went to the hospital Jesus told me I wasn't having a heart attack, and then they ran all the tests and said, yeah, Jesus is right. <laughs> you didn't have a heart attack. Anyway, I'm serious as a heart attack, though, folks, about this whole issue. We have got a mess in our country. We have got a mess in our country. And the mess is from the top down. Now, I know I'm not perfect, and I know you're not perfect, and I know we got some problems out here in the hinderland, out here in the field. But ladies and gentlemen, when we have a sodomite, a sodomite who is a member of the United States House of Representatives, he is a married sodomite. He believes in sodomy so much that he married another man after they laid down with each other and stuck things in each other and act like a bunch of dogs in the yard. Then he married that man, and he is a member of the United States House of Representatives. Now, folks, I know I'm getting graphic, but golly, folks, you got to wake up. My good friend down in Georgia, another Bob down there, though, he writes a thing, wake up, preachers, you better wake up, you better wake up, better wake up. And I'm waking up, and I'm mad, and I'm not taking it anymore. And so we're going to fight, starting at 12 noon, high noon, imprecatory prayer, shootout with corrupt officials every Saturday. Join us, 
712-432-1690, access code 399-430-POUND. Now, if you like a more mundane, if you like a more loving prayer meeting, you can join at 5 o'clock a.m. on that same prayer number, and we'll pray a little bit more genteel. We'll pray a little bit more for you preachers who have lace on your drawers and for you ladies who want to come on and pray. We'll pray a little bit more kindly. We'll pray a little bit more loving. But when we come on to high noon, look out. You better buckle your seatbelt. You better saddle up because we're going to name names. And if you're willing, we'll take your name. I want to encourage you. I'm going to give you some imprecatory prayer names on my prayer list that I'm going to be praying for. And I'll tell you, if I can find my sword, I'm going to find my sword here. Jesus said, you ain't got a sword, arm yourself. Well, I'm fixing to arm myself right now, ladies and gentlemen, with, uh, with my sword, the sword of the Spirit. By the way, did you know that the Washington Monument sticks up in the sky? It is the tallest building in our nation's capital. And it was built designed from the pages of Almighty God. It was designed to resemble a sword. And the Lincoln Memorial was designed to resemble the Ark of the Covenant. And the dome of the Capitol was designed to be like the helmet of salvation. And so God had a lot to do with building our nation's capital. But the sword of the Spirit. Now, I'm getting a busy call on that number, and I'm not going to take it, folks, uh, because uh, I have put out a message that if I'm on the air between 9 and 10, I probably won't answer the phone. Now, that is the church phone here. The 800 number phone is right here. It's available. I will answer that number. But here's how we're going to pray. One of the prayers we're going to pray at the high noon imprecatory prayer shootout with corrupt government officials, here's one of the prayers that I am going to pray. Not my words, but God's word. Hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful sodomites are opened against us. I added that, I guess you know. They have spoken against us with a lying tongue. Barney Frank stood in the lobby of the United States House of Representatives, and here's what he said. I want that effing Wiley Drake out of here. And he didn't say effing, folks. And the security came over and said, Wiley, you got to leave. Mr. Frank, I said, first of all, there ain't nothing mister about that sodomite. And he said, well, if you don't leave, we'll arrest you. And I said, well, I'm too old to go to jail right now. I don't want to go. I'm tired. So I left. The mouth of the wicked are, uh, and the mouth of the deceitful are open against us. They have spoken against us with a lying tongue. Barney Frank's a liar, along with being a sodomite. They can pass us about with words of hatred. He hates Wiley Drake. He hates the gospel. He hates Jesus. And they fight against us without a cause. For our love, we try to love them. We try to tell them how much God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We preach that love to them, but we give ourselves, David said, to prayer. They've rewarded us evil for good. They put me in jail, folks, for praying. I'm a convicted criminal because I didn't kick the homeless people out of my church. That's how corrupt our mess is. That's how corrupt my little city is here in Buena Park, California. You hear that spinning noise when you come through Buena Park? That's Walter Knott spinning in his grave because he sees what's going on here in his town that he was so faithful to be a good Christian in. They rewarded us evil for good. Set thou, we're going to pray on Saturday, Set thou a wicked man over him, and we're going to name him. We're not only going to name Barney Frank, but we're going to ask you to give us names. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan, the devil himself, stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, and he shall be judged. Didn't say he might be judged, could be judged. It says, when he, 
that is the crooked politicians, shall be judged, let him be condemned. That's what I'm going to pray on Saturday, folks. And let his prayer become sin. Let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few. I'm going to pray that on Saturday for anybody that you put on the imprecatory prayer list. I'll have my own list, but I need yours as well. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Folks, I didn't say that. God did. And Mr. Hannity and Mr. Combs and all you, Mr. Keith Overbite and all you people who want to make me out to be a terrible man, I'm just doing what God said. And if you don't like that, take it up with God. Don't invite me back on your stupid television show. Let his children be fatherless and let his wife become a widow. Yes, that's imprecatory prayer. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath. I understand uh, uh, Mr. Frank is in some trouble because people have extorted some of his money. That's an answer to my prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his prosperity be cut off, and in the generations following, let their names be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut the memory of them from the earth, because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cussing, uh, let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. That's just one of the imprecatory prayers that we'll be praying on Saturday against these corrupt, evil, vile, sodomite politicians. And we'll also be <coughs> praying Psalm 55, 58, <coughs> excuse me, 68, 69, and 83. And by the way, Jesus in Matthew 23 Verse 13, 15, 16, 23, 24, 27, and 29 give us our New Testament marching orders as well. Let us join Paul. Remember old Paul? Paul was a prayer warrior. Somebody referred to him as old camel knees. He spent so much time on his knees he had calluses there. Paul was a prayer warrior, and he prayed for his people. He prayed love. He showed love. But also, let me tell you what Paul said. Let us join Paul when he said, I declare anathema upon anyone who loves not the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, folks, that's what Paul the Apostle said. So I'm not out of school here. I'm not out on a limb. Church father. Now, for those of you folks who are Protestants, who are evangelicals, who came out of the Protestant movement that Dr. Martin Luther started, uh, let me say what he said. If you like Martin Luther, and I happen to like him, I think he was a good man, didn't agree with everything he said, but I did believe he believed in grace. But Martin Luther said, if any of the enemies of God's people belong to God's election, the church's prayer against them gives way to their conversion and seeketh no more than that the judgment should follow them only until they acknowledge their sin and turn and seek God. Martin Luther said, we're going to pray that God would come against them so that they might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know about imprecatory prayer, I would encourage you to get a little book a little book's been written, and it's called The War Psalms, The War Psalms of the Prince of Peace, Imprecatory Prayer. Good little book. You can find it on Amazon or wherever you get books, and I would encourage you to get it. We're going to have a high noon imprecatory prayer shootout. 
with government officials. We're going to name names, and we're going to pray that God would remove them from office. I don't care if they're a social worker at CPS or a supervisor at CPS or a public pretender at CPS, that is a public offender, <laughs> defender. They don't defend anybody. They offend a lot of people. But we're going to pray against them by name. We're going to name names. We're going to name names of judges. And by the way, we're going to name the name of some judges. I don't have them in front of me right now. I'll get them later. And I need to have my producer try to find out who they are. Uh, there were two or three judges that were involved in the Lisa Miller case. Le Lisa Miller case is a terrible miscarriage of justice. And there were some Vermont judges and some Virginia judges. I used to have their name written down on one of my imprecatory prayer lists, but we need to find out we need to find out those judges' names because I want to continue my imprecatory prayer against them. Here's a dear lady, Lisa Miller. Lisa Miller was abused as a child, grew up a mess, and she went to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist suggested she get in touch with her more feminine side and get a lover. And so she did. She fell in love, spelled L-U-S-T, with a woman by the name of Jenkins. And they had an affair together. They laid down in the bed together. They became sodomites together. And they decided they were going to have children. Now, two women can't make a baby. So Lisa went out and was artificially inseminated. That is, they took the sperm from a man and put it in her and impregnated her by a man. And she had a little girl, and her name is Isabella. Now, after the baby was born, Lisa Miller became confused, became guilty, and began to deal with the fact that what she was doing was wrong. Having sex with another woman is wrong. And so she was wrong, and she admitted it. And she went to Dr. Jerry Falwell's church, and she came to know Jesus as Lord and as Savior. And as she became a Christian, as she accepted Christ, she renounced all of her sodomy. She asked God to forgive her, and God forgave her, removed her sin as far as the east is from the west. And so Lisa Miller got saved got turned around and decided she wanted nothing to do with this Jenkins woman anymore. And so she pulled away from her. Now, the woman claimed that she was the mother of little Isabella. Now, she could only claim that because she obviously had no biological tie to her or anything, but she wanted to be her mother she wanted to be part of this nonsense that the sodomites have because Heather has two moms or Heather has two dads and that garbage. So Jenkins said, I want my little girl. That's my baby. And the courts, it went before the court. In fact, the matter is the courts ruled that Jenkins must be allowed visitation. And so the court ruled that this other mom should have visitation. Now, Lisa Miller is not an outlaw, and she wanted to abide by the court's wishes. So she allowed little Isabella, at five or six years old, allowed her to visit Jenkins. And she came home from one visit, and Lisa said, I'm not letting her go back to visit her anymore. I don't care what the courts say. I'm not going to let her go back there. Well, why would Lisa do that? Lisa did that because little Isabella came home, wetting the bed, and upset because this Jenkins woman had made her take a bath with her and reported to her mom that they were watching television with people naked laying around on the floor and playing on the floor. So obviously they were watching pornography in little five-year-old, six-year-old Isabella's presence and taking a bath with her. And by the way, after another visit, 
Lisa finally gave in and said, okay, she can have another unsupervised visit. She had another unsupervised visit, and little Isabella came home and was very proud to say to her mother, Mother, I know how to pee standing up. That's right. I know how to pee standing up. Right. And she showed her mother how this Jenkins woman had showed her how to hold her body part like a penis so she could pee standing up. And Lisa said, no more. I'm not putting her back there anymore. Well, we have a caller on Crusade Radio Line. Caller, it is our policy to ask you to identify yourself, and if you'd like, we'd love to have it. So go ahead and tell us why you're calling. Well, this is Linda Evans Shepherd, and I'm the author of when you need a miracle, how to ask God for the impossible. Amen. I wanted Sis- to talk about prayer today. Amen. And I want to talk about prayer today, too. We've been talking about prayer already, different kinds of prayer. But uh, give us uh, once again uh, your name and uh, the name of your book. Linda Evans Shepherd. And that's like in German or The Lord is My Shepherd. <laughs> And the name of my book is, When You Need a Miracle, How to Ask God for the Impossible. Okay, When You Need a Miracle, How to Ask God for the Impossible. Well, my dear sister, tell us a little bit about how that book came about, uh, and a little bit about Linda Evans Shepherd, and uh, a little bit about your book. Well, uh, I, I'm actually kind of a funny person to write a book like this. Because I have a lovely disabled daughter who's paralyzed from the neck down. However, I and my daughter experience a lot of miracles. And you know what they say? They say that you'll never learn to walk on water if an occasional toilet never overflows <laughs> in my life. I love it. I've had a lot of prayer practice, and I've gotten a lot of miracles. Well, praise the Lord, and you've written a book now about when you need a miracle. Right, right. And if I were to put this in a nutshell, uh, what it is to get a, or to ask for a miracle, I would say that it's inviting God's presence into your situation. And when God's presence is with you, then that's where the miraculous starts, and that will make all the difference. Well, the greatest miracle in the world, of course, is setting before you now, before this camera and before this microphone, because I once was lost and on my way to a devil's hell, but God miraculously saved me and turned me around and made me a saint of Almighty God. And that is the greatest miracle that God does all the time. But there are many other miracles. We saw one just this week. Just a few days ago, uh, we were told by an uh, uh, Asian missionary group that one of their missionaries had been kidnapped by a bunch of thugs and drug off out into the woods and told that they were going to demand a ransom for him and that they were going to kill him once they got the ransom. And that was about four days ago. Wow. Yesterday, we found out that he had been released, a miracle upon miracle. And even the media there is saying so in India because they say those people never return someone that they kidnap. They kidnap them, they hold on to them until they get the ransom, and then they kill them, and later somebody finds a body. This man is a pastor, Pastor George, in India, He was kidnapped, and now he's back home with his wife and two beautiful daughters. That is an absolute miracle, and God's people all over this world prayed for a miracle. And I'll be honest, as we prayed, I thought, my goodness, uh, this this is just probably not going to happen. And oh, ye a little faith, and I have to admit that, and I ask the Lord to forgive me for that, but we praise God that that man... Pastor George is back with his wife and children there in India. God indeed is a miracle-working God. 
And when you when they needed a miracle, that people have doubted and God did a miracle anyway. And all I can say to that is praise God. Amen. And in fact, praising God is a key to receiving miracles. It removes a lot of hindrances. Amen. Let's God be God and let's God move in the situation. Amen. And God is indeed moving in our situation in this country. That's why we're praying. That's why we have prayer meetings every day, sometimes two, three times a day, because we believe that we need a miracle in this country. We need a miracle politically. We need a a miracle church-wise. We need a miracle revival, and we're praying for it. Linda Evans Shepard, ladies and gentlemen, uh, she's written a book, and give us the title of the book one more time. It's called When You Need a Miracle, How to Ask God for the Impossible. But I have some ideas on exactly what we need to be praying for our country. You can hear them. Thank you. Share them with us. Well, I believe that our country has um, has a spirit, two different spirits that have fallen upon the people. Number one is the spirit of confusion, which is why nobody can figure out how to fix the economic mess. The other is the spirit of blindness. A lot of that comes upon us because we have opened our lives, we've opened our homes through our televisions to become voyeurs, to uh, view sin, to participate in sin. And so God is allowing us what we've asked for, the removal of God in our public life. And so he has sent the spirit of confusion and the spirit of blindness on our land. So what we need to do is to get on our knees and repent and ask God to remove these spirits off of our land and the power and authority of the name and the blood of Jesus. Well, you're absolutely right, my sister, and uh, we're doing that on a daily basis, and we would in- encourage you as well as others uh, to call and be on the prayer line with us. We do that every morning. At uh, Where are you located? I'm in Colorado. Okay. Well, we we're on the uh, we're on the prayer line a little bit later. There, we're on at um, six o'clock a.m. Colorado time, and you're welcome to join us. The prayer line number is, and this is for anybody, folks. The prayer line number is seven one two four three two one six nine zero, and the access code is three nine nine four three zero pound, and you can call that number. And, and simply uh, be a part of that prayer call if you'd like. Would you mind repeating that? You broke up a little bit and I didn't get the whole number. 712-432-1690. All right. And the act- more about what that prayer line does. Okay, at, at 6 o'clock... I got all kind of phones ringing here. Here, I'm going to let you take that one. Um, at 6 o'clock, Denver time, we call that number, 712-432-1690, and we spend the next two hours in a prayer meeting by telephone. Oh. Now, now, when you call that number, you have to put in this access code in order to access uh, the line, and that access code is 399-430-POUND. Pound. The, Say that one more time. The pound sign. Oh, the pound sign. I'm sorry. We have kind of a funny connection today. I hope you can hear me okay. We can hear you fine, and I'm sorry you're not able to hear me. Let me repeat the number and the access code for you again. The number is 712-432-1690. The access code is 399430. And then the pound number. Got it. And uh, you're welcome to call any day. We're there seven days a week. And uh, we're there for two hours, typically. Sometimes a little longer, but typically about two hours. And we take prayer requests. We pray. And we share. It is what I call a telephonic prayer meeting. Telephonic in that it's on the telephone. Prayer. I love that. Prayer. That's mostly what we do. And meeting means... We can share prayer requests. This last week, of course, we shared about the Chinese, I mean the uh, 
preacher in India and other places, and we share personal needs as well. I ask people to pray for me uh, for sermons, pray for me for my family, pray for me for all kinds of things, and, and we all share that. So we call it a telephonic prayer meeting. Now, if you cannot join us, ladies and gentlemen, and you'd like to send us your prayer meeting uh, item, you simply send an email to telephonic prayer, telephonic prayer at hotmail.com. And you can send that to us, and we'll be glad to put that in the prayer room. Well, I'm very glad to know about this. Well, thank you, Linda. We'd love to have you join us any day. And uh, again, where is your book available? <clears throat> My books are available in uh, mainly Christian bookstores and also Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Nook, Kindle, uh, CBD, and other online outlets. Okay, well, so I won't have any trouble finding it. And it's yes. When You Need a Miracle. You also go to my website, which is called needmiraclebook.com. And you can see a video uh, there where I tell our story, uh, which has a lot of miracles in it. And then um, there's other resources there as well. Now give that website one more time. It's called needmiraclebook.com. Needmiraclebook.com. Thank you so much, Linda. We've got to run. We're running out of time. Thank you. Call back again on the evening show if you can. I will try. And we'll be on at 5 o'clock our time. That's 6 o'clock your time. And um, God bless you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What, what does that mean? You want to say something? Go ahead. To the listening audience, Pastor Wiley was talking earlier about the Lisa Miller case and saying some pretty harsh and graphic things. I know Lisa and Isabella personally, and I was in attendance when that little girl brought that information home to her mother. This is not just hearsay, this is not just gossip, nor things to shock people with, but I was living proof that that actually took place in that little girl's life. Their whereabouts now, no one knows, not even including myself, but I know them personally. Thank you so much for sharing that, and we'll talk more about that. Do we have a caller on the line? Hello? That may have been Mother Mel binging off on us because he's scooting, but... Uh... All right. No volume. I'm sorry, Mel. That was my producer. She was across the studio. I think you can hear me okay now. Uh, let me just ask you. Uh, volume okay now. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have handed her the phone. It's fine. It's fine. And, uh, but it, 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 got on, it got on television. It just didn't get on radio very loud. Repeat what I said. Well, repeat what she said was simply this. Uh, we knew about what had happened. I told you the story about this little girl that was exposed to this sodomite, and she came home telling her mother horrific stories of how this woman had taken a bath with a little seven-year-old and had taught her how to pee standing up and all of those kind of things. I was there. And, and um, my producer, Corey Harkins, was there and can testify to that. And we're going to begin tomorrow uh, at our imprecatory prayer high noon shootout we're going to pray against Judge William Cohen. That's one of them. But there's another Virginia judge that we need to find out who he is, and I've got his name somewhere. We also need you to pray for an attorney, uh, a Sarah Starr, who has defended this Jenkins monster. This Jenkins monster is nothing more than a sodomite. we got one minute. And she is now a fugitive, according to Interpol. We have no idea where. If I knew where, I'd send her some money. But I don't know where to send it. And if I did, the FBI would be right there to get her anyway. So anyway, pray for Lisa Miller and Isabella. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to go. Remember, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. We'll see you back here live at 5 on The Wiley Drake Show.